This is it. This is episode 514, No Laugh Track Podcast, here at Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am Justin Severson, uh, who gets to host this each and every week. Excited this week, as all weeks, let's be honest, because I get to talk to Robert Brill, who always impresses me with his joke writing. He's a great podcast guest. He's a good guy. And uh, now you have a lot to live up for with those uh, three comments. So here we go. I d- yeah, man, you you really uh, you really buried me with uh, all the flattery. I appreciate that. He won first prize in the coolest guy ever contest. To be fair, it was thrown by me. <laughs> so and I was the only contestant, and I n- er- narrowly eked out a victory. But yeah, that was. Uh, I am kind of dressed like the cool guy right now with a, like a 1950s like grease sort of thing. I just kind of threw on a jacket because I hate having stuff in my my pants pockets. I'm, I'm craving fall weather. I like a light jacket, something without uh, or, or something where you know I can I can put all my shit into it so it's not in my pants pockets like that. I don't like have my phone in the back pocket and stuff and. Yeah, so I'm ready. I'm ready. I was. It's nice and cool in here now for the summer. So come in for free air conditioning and stuff. And damn right, if I'm you need a place to, uh, if you're if you're cold, come in here to heat up. If you're hot, come in here to cool off. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're here uh, in the middle of the day, or you know, later in the afternoon here st- of your second day of your week here at Acme. Yes, day two. Day Thursday. two. Yeah, Thursday. How did the day one go? Great. It was sold out. Um, and I'm working with Sean and Ahmed and their lights out. So it's yeah. it, I mean, it's only been one night, but it was a great night so far. And uh, I'm uh, I got high expectations for the quality of the shows this week. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I, of course, listen back to when we did this a year ago in June, a little over a year ago. It was. And I also heard your set from last night. Oh, OK. Yeah, very impressed Thoughts? as always. Very impressed as always. All right, I got a lot of things I want to I want to talk about with that. Okay, first thing, yep. we're, we're going to break down every joke. L- oh, well, that's I'm sure nothing would interest people more. Yep, <laughs> I mean, I'm an expert, so yeah, yeah. No, uh, d- just this thing right here. So uh, last year on the podcast, I pointed out how impressed I was that you could do the alphabet backwards. Oh yes, and your yep. reply was, "Oh yeah, that was a riff last night on stage." Oh, it was. Wow, what that's a, what you what told a me. Cocky, what a cocky! No, I, th- the ability to do it, uh, what I've I've honed over years. You, but incorporating and you explaining it in. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Well, I was just about to do it again. So yeah, yeah no, no, you uh, ex- really. Who save me a? You explained how oh, okay. you learned that something as a kid with some book or program. Yeah, I was or about to say, boy, yeah. I was a real lying motherfucker <laughs> if I told you I could just <laughs> improvise the entire alphabet backwards on the spot. Don't. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Uh, yeah, you're on stage. That pops into your head. Like I'm gonna try this and then do it successfully. <laughs> that's such a, a rapid <laughs> clip, too. Like no pauses or anything. Like, that would be amazing. Yeah, UTS. Be ap- he had that. He had that just ready <laughs> in the chamber. Like who's? Yeah. I mean, the first four or five, we could all get there. But yeah, yeah. yeah once exactly. you once you pass X, I think you just like Z Y X. Uh, shit. U V V U U V. Uh yeah so no you <laughs> you explained how you'd learned that but you said it was a r- using that in the uh the bit you have about drunk driving yeah you said that that was a riff that mm-hmm. night and then last night I hear the material and it's part of it oh absolutely yeah nice. I mean it, it's been a part of it it's part of the the merch that I sell or right. koozies that say drunk drivers at instructor because that's part of the bit and then the alphabet backwards and so the the merch sells so well it that has I, it's to. still I'm still doing the bit and it's it's a nice momentum builder toward the end of the set after uh, the the gluttony of uh, ISIS and abortion and everything else I'm joking about it I like to bring people together with a nice solid pro drinking and driving message at the end of the show I'm not sure I've attended a comedy show watched one on television anything where the performer has used uh, the name Enoch yeah from the Bible mm-hmm. and clit as in the part of the female oh, anatomy. Oh, man. There's probably a Dennis Miller special with uh, something similar to that. But, yeah, it's not. It's rare. It's definitely rare. I I mean, it's not the same bit, I don't think. I think they're separate bits. Well, they're Enoch absolutely separate. Well, they're but separated yeah, yeah. by, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. I don't think Enoch could find a clit. If you could, <laughs> if you could go back to Enoch, I don't think he'd have the slightest idea what a clitoris uh, was for. Or, or, yeah. 
I wonder if there's a wor- a term in Not the Bible. Not a lot Bible. of gynecology back then, I would imagine. Yeah. Just a lot of, uh, you've angered God, and that's why you're bleeding now. Like, not a lot of understanding biology, I would think. Although there's a lot of that in the modern day, too, as well, I, I think. But <laughs> There's no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> there's absolutely no doubt. Uh, I, yeah, I... I, I learned Except stuff. instead of uh, not knowing where the clitoris is, it's hating the Barbie movie unnecessarily. I think that is <laughs> that's that's the equivalent. That's the modern day equivalent. Did you go see the Barbie movie? I have not yet. Not because I have anything against it. I just it's a timing thing. And when I had a chance, I saw Oppenheimer because I share a birthday with him. Uh, oh. And I've always been interested. I've always been interested in him. Never enough to actually. I have the book now because I watched the movie and loved the movie, and so now I want to read the book but uh, i was just fascinated by like the guy and the whole moral issue and dilemma around building it then using it and stuff and my grandfather was actually on uh the i mean to the extent that uh, this story that gets passed down the the family is true but apparently he was on one of the boats that was uh stationed just off japan where had Truman not dropped the bomb or had it not been effective or anything, then he would have been among the first wave of U.S. soldiers to go on shore in Japan. So, in a sense, dropping the bomb made that point entirely moot. And so I do maybe a small debt of gratitude to Mr. Oppenheimer and Mr. Truman, despite the however many hundreds of thousands of innocent Japanese people were killed uh, for uh, being here. So it's another kind of fascinating little tidbit that kind of... Uh, you know, joined all the other interesting things that, that all the other aspects of it. I I was interested in 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 me not seeing Barbie, but it's not because I have anything against clitorises or women. <laughs> in fact, if you watch the show, you see how uh, <laughs> it, I would even say uh, excessively pro clitoris I am. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I think I remember a joke about uh yes, I, I remember at least one very vividly. <laughs> <laughs> One, that that tag is so good because it starts <laughs> off with a bit about the prophet Muhammad, uh, which is already kind of dicey terrain attempting to, you know, get people to, to laugh about uh, the, the prophet Muhammad. And uh, out of respect, I still say the full. I, I'm not calling him Mo. I'm not doing I'm not like I'm still, you know, paying the respect due to the the prophet. But it's not it's not an easy bit to get into. But I know if I can just make it to that tag, I'll be fine. One of the things you <laughs> it is uh, I love uh watching the crowd's reaction to you because uh, I mean a Wednesday night crowd might get a different reaction for you than a uh, Saturday night crowd true or false Well Wednesday night was insider night and those are usually the people hip to comedy and stuff so we'll see I would imagine although you never really know I think because there are it it all depends on what what people are sensitive about and I would imagine and I kind of talk about it in my set, too. I try to balance things out. And even though I'm not up here being overtly political, there are topics of humor that I think certainly the left will be more eager to laugh at. And then others where I think the right might be more willing to laugh at. And I, I have a bit about God being gay. And I think the left is going to like that more than the right. But then I do the bit on the Prophet Muhammad. And it's like, well, sorry, left. Like, you had no problem laughing at gay God for a while. But I switch it to Prophet Muhammad. See, this is the conservatives. This might be their bit. Like, yeah. I have something for everybody. And I try not to come up on stage and be Johnny Liberal or anything, but have enough topics of uh, of jokes and ridicule where if you watch it, you you – Okay, he's like, maybe he's on the left a little bit, but he's joking about Biden. He's joking about the Prophet Muhammad. He's joking about terrorists. I, that's the fun one to me is I joke about suicide bombers and I lose people. And I'm like, I don't I feel like that they should be a fair target. Right. I think your words last night were these are terrorist people. They'd kill us if they could. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, smooth. Real I should smooth. be able to razz them. Certainly, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's just the Minnesota nice thing, where it's just, oh, but they were radicalized at a young age and probably grew up in poverty, and it's not like, no, I know the reasons for it, but I mean, they are still terrorists. Like that's no, no, Robert. We need to yeah. find their parents. Yep. Mm-hmm. If anything, blame their parent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, I get to, I, I joke about you know God being gay, and they have no problem with that. So it's 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 fun. I think just pushing people content wise to see 
Because even that, like, the conservatives will love the jokes about terrorists and suicide bombers and stuff. And so that's what's nice, especially about uh, crowds like like the ones here where you get a good mixture of people. And as long as there's a, a fair amount of them, then no matter what I'm saying, I'm usually getting a few people that will come with me regardless of the topic. And then it's like, okay, clearly it's not for everybody, but, you know, these people over here like it. Have you ever, uh, you know, where that stuff's not going how you want it to go? Have you ever held back, like, with, we're continuing the same? I think I used to feeling more. of you know the same yeah. vibes. Like I would. I used uh, uh, the me of maybe two or three years ago would probably pivot. And you would. Like, well, let me get back on safer ground. Yeah, but I think as I've gotten older, and I'm not even that old, but just older doing comedy and doing Experience. shows and stuff. Yeah, it's almost like. I just don't back down, like just sit in it a little bit, because after the show, it's it's usually just moments. It's maybe three or four moments throughout the course of a 45, 50 minute set where as the performer, you focus on those three or four moments. But as an audience, it's just, OK, the next thing and the next thing. And then, you know, I think they'd be hard pressed to be like, well, the, the, try to figure out when the comic felt. And they're like, I don't I don't know. Like, I thought it was good. So I think part of it was just getting out of my own head. Yeah. And. Um, if, as long as I don't seem rattled and in control, I don't like the crowd might disagree with me, but it's also, well, I'm the one with the microphone. I know what I'm doing. Like the jokes are fine. I have more coming up. And so I think I've, I've gotten a lot better at not backing down when crowds, um, aren't necessarily fully on board with, um, with what I'm saying. Has, has what people have said to you about your material after shows affected that at all? Not real. I mean, part of it is I like the the bits I can see where they would be controversial, like the Prophet Muhammad, the like clitoris thing. But I'm also not wrong. Like, I think we can all agree that female genital mutilation is a bad thing. I'm giving right? that a thumbs feel, down. Thank you. Yes, me as well. So it's also like, OK, may, and part of it, too, is maybe I mean, especially if they're on the left, they're probably afraid to laugh. I don't want to laugh at the props. See, I then do I'm going to see culturally I, and it's like, come on. I mean, isn't that also patronizing? Yes. Where it's like, OK, if we're treating everybody equally, I'm making fun of God. I have a few Jew jokes in there. But Muhammad, no, no, lay up. A, oh, so Muhammad's got thinner skin than the other prophets or Muhammad needs to be more protected than the other because he's weaker. So you're saying Muhammad's weaker like mm -hmm. I'm. I, I take shots at everybody. Yep. That's the way I treat everybody and, and ideas equally and stuff is just kind of and it gets, you know, it's just one uh, skinny dude just, you know, lobbing a few zingers on stage like it's going to be fine. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Have we broken the record for saying clit in an episode of um, No Laugh Track? Because we have to be close. I'm going to have would think. Mary Mac one time. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. I <laughs> Other than that, we'll check the tapes. We'll okay, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll check the tapes. Uh, I know that when I work an event in the evening, it takes me a really long time to kind of wind down and want to go to bed and, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll go home. and I just don't go to immediately, uh, immediately go to bed. If I was home the whole evening, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, but my wife, doing she's got it. She'll watch uh, nine episodes of Suits. That's how she winds down. Well, how about uh, yeah. Robert Burrill? What is Robert Burrill? How do I home? wind down? Uh, true crime, I like, which is such an odd thing to go to bed to, but I don't know. That's just the human, the, just the stories and, and everything, and I don't know. It, it, I'm fucked up. I don't know what it is about... Uh, we can swear, right? This is absolutely yeah, okay. podcasts or uh, like documentaries. Uh, sometimes, uh, well, I guess a, a little of both depends on how much energy I have. If it's not much, then I'll because they also have soothing voices. A lot of them do, like regardless of what they're saying. The narrators, like, yeah. When they found the body, it was four o'clock in the morning, and you're like, oh, okay, all right. You're uh, right about that. Yeah, but yeah, cold case files, all that uh, stuff. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it says about me, but there's just and and part of it I used to do a bit on this too is like once you get hooked on that stuff, it's really hard to go back to anything scripted because oh, it, it doesn't have the same. You know, it's like doing heroin and then uh, I don't know Advil. Like I don't know what, <laughs> but like once once you've had that that hard stuff, there's not like I don't like ooh they caught the fake person. Like I don't you know it's it's hard for me to to get really <laughs> invested. 
Uh, I think this happens to people that watch uh, too much porn. This is that's that's what my wife tells me. Then they, you get into the uh, you know. Oh sure, yeah. I mean, I could I could desensitize. I could, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, I well, I mean. It, it is, it's, yeah, it's one of the, and I hate to do jokes within the thing, but it's like the perfect setup where, yeah, I mean, you do, especially when it's real people, real dead bodies, and then, you know, the fake dead bodies don't do anything for you anymore. And it's sad because they did exist and stuff, but, I mean, the family's getting paid to do the show, and they want to tell the story of their, it, to me, it'd be disrespectful to ignore it. Like, this is some trauma the family's gone through, <laughs> and they they would feel good if people knew about their horribly murdered relative. So that's my way of respecting the the wishes of the murder victims. I say hats off to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. How are you using social media? I'm not going to use the word hero, but I mean, I think that that's something a it hero It popped would into say. people's minds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, how are you using social media these days, sir? Uh, probably not well enough. I'm posting clips, but it's I can't I can't get too invested in it because then I just well how come that clip didn't get as many but like why and it's just an algorithm and I I wish they would bring back gatekeepers like bring back the seven gatekeepers and then if they don't like it you're like well I guess this isn't for me versus just this endless goddamn hamster wheel of oh clips oh reels oh and then I I've uh, to me I've uh, I've been far more successful in just getting into clubs through comics and and doing well in the clubs and then they have me back. Huh? Like, I don't know. What are you taught? What? Yeah, I know. I'm just old, old man corner over here with uh yeah I would send out emails and <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, I mean I I guess I'm old school that way. But I just I it's it's it messes with me too much psychologically to to care about all that stuff. And so I'm, I'm trying to get better at just pushing through it and, and trying to post consist. If it's a joke like Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I'm good for five or six jokes a week. I post them. If they're good, I'll put them in the act and stuff. Yeah. But the Instagram thing really messes with me. I see. Yeah. Well, just hire somebody. You can afford I that. I should. Right? No. That's <laughs> right. I just have one of my uh, wife's many children uh, <laughs> field that... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you have a list of chores for the for people yeah, around the yeah, house there? Yeah, it was just work on, yeah, it's uh, Operation Get Grandpa, Get Step Grandpa Famous and get everybody. <laughs> Help putting the dishes people. away exactly. and post a clip for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you, uh, how about like TikTok? Do you have a TikTok account? I should, uh, but part of it, I don't know, like, it's just my personality, where if it's any movie, any show, and everyone's like, oh, you gotta see it, then I don't, and everyone's like, you gotta be on TikTok, and then I'm like, I I probably will when it's too late, you know, once it gets officially banned in the country, then I'll get a TikTok. <laughs> it's like how I used to have an AM radio show before podcasts were popular, yeah. then I quit, and then it's like, pretend AM radio is the thing to have. Absolutely. So timing has never really been my thing. <laughs> But I don't have any biological children, so maybe to a certain extent I have been able to um, use my timing for <laughs> – I've gotten some good out of my timing, <laughs> but not career-wise. But <laughs> we, We'll never know how close those calls were. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> we just not know as far as I know. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can't rule out any, like uh, – uh, you know, 16-year-old kid in a corduroy jacket showing up on the porch at 3 in the afternoon some weekend with a folded-up New York Times under his arm. and Well, I don't know. He's got really nice hair. Exa yeah. Mm -hmm. No DNA test needed. We don't need a... Oh, my God. That's so funny. Did uh, uh, Did you do speech or debate growing up? Uh yeah, I think I did. You I think did you speech. did. How did you get? Was it like I'm looking for? How did you get so comfortable on stage? That had to be something. I did, yeah, well, I did theater. I did all kinds of stuff. I did one act play theater um, in college, in high school too, a little bit, and then in college as well. I think I took speech in maybe both. I don't know. What yeah, was the I one was, act play? What did you do? The one act play. Oh boy. Um. A what Bronx Tale. I did all the characters. No. <laughs> it was some high school, like, teen drama thing. I forget what it was. It wasn't good. It wasn't. It was just, a, 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 like, a horrible after-school special was there, type thing. Was there humor involved? No, I don't think so. No. no. and that wasn't, like, the kind of stuff. Because I, I would do plays, and I would riff in the plays. 
And if, because normally I'd have like a buddy or two, shout out to Eric Bugler. I don't know if he's listening, but he was a buddy of mine for summer theater and we would like improvise and stuff doing scenes. But those were in comedies. And if it's just like, oh, you have to worry about uh, sexual assault in high school, you know, then you can't really like riff in these scenes or try to make light uh, of them. <laughs> or at least I, I didn't want to at the time. Not that I would want to now, but um, yeah, so I can't I can't remember what that was, but I did some plays in college. Uh, no more peace. I played Socrates. Um, Twelfth night. I was Sir Andrew, uh, which was great because he was like this dim witted, like well intentioned, but it was idiot. And I I had never read Shakespeare or done Shakespeare, so when you're playing the buffoon. Uh, it was very easy for me to simulate <laughs> not understanding or knowing what's going on. This guy is unnatural. Me. Yeah, exactly. Born into this role. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where did, uh, where was college? I feel like you've told me before. Bemidji State. Bemi Beavers. Beavers, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bemidji State. Beavers. The Mighty Beavers. How did you end up there? Other schools said no. <laughs> I don't, it was... It was close enough to home, but not too far away, and it Man. was it was accessible enough. Where had I gone to so the U of M or another school, especially if you're in mass com or theater or something, you almost have to go there three, three and a half years before you get to be the star or have something that you are the the main person in. But in Bemidji, it's just so small and accessible that I think the first I don't think I started doing theater until. Maybe my junior year, but I was the lead in the first play that I tried out for. Oh, holy cow! I mean, I was, uh, I was all right. I was all right. <laughs> I could do the alphabet backwards. I would throw that in there too. <laughs> I was love it. Yeah. What, what was the first funny thing you did on stage? Uh, the f the first total uh, the play that I did was uh, the Inspector General, and that was um, this town is very corrupt, and I play the like drunken, womanizing, gambling sycophant that everybody mistakes for the inspector they think is coming to check things out. So they're like trying to bribe me, and I'm just like, yeah, this is the greatest thing ever. Love it. Uh, but being funny on stage, I don't know, probably something in high school, I would guess, maybe a summer theater or something. Because I would start off doing musicals, but in bit parts, and get a few laughs that way from just acting the fool. So s summer theater that was in high school. That was in high school, yeah. Who 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 was that through? I'm curious. I don't know. It was just, just something I just I don't wrote summer theater, which was nice. It was like a, it's a, it's a small conservative sports oriented town, but there's a few hip people there, and they've had a summer theater program that goes back to. I think the '70s or whatever, and so it's, it's kind of cool again? that they war road. War road, yeah, yeah, and um, and yeah, so they um, they they still to this day, I think, uh, take their summer theater very seriously and stuff. So that was a big step uh, in my development as a performer was doing that. I bet. Do you ever get yeah. up to War Road anymore? Rarely, rarely do I do. It's I mean maybe once or twice a year, and he's any and it's nice, it's nostalgic, but it wears off after like day two because sure. then it's like there's a reason I left. Like this is great seeing my family and some friends and stuff, but I there's nothing to do. I'm not outdoorsy. I'm not fishing or hunting or anything. As so. you told me last time, uh, yeah. you you worked at a <laughs> bait shop. <laughs> yeah, I worked at a bait shop that <laughs> did poorly. <laughs> I did a I did a marketing class one year and they would like they would make crates and other stuff and I remember I like cut my finger pretty badly day one and then I got put on quality control the rest of the year so uh, was that at a desk instead? No, yeah, I was like I worked the sander. They trusted me with the sander because they're like, well, he can't like sand his arm off or anything. You just slowly so. removes exactly. Skin. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nothing sharp for me. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we got oh, a couple more minutes here. What else uh, What else sh should we be mentioning? So the material you're doing right now, has is, is any of this stuff been recorded? Uh, not, I don't think so. The, the, the last little bit, the, the step grandpa stuff toward the end of the set, I think, and I, I try mixing it up and everything. So depending on which jokes I do, some of those might have been recorded already. But the the first 30 35 minutes of the political topical stuff yeah. i don't think is uh maybe a biden one liner or something depending on like if it's going really well then it's like okay i can go in the rolodex and like maybe pull this one out or do Heck something yeah. like that but uh for the most part it's all new and unrecorded yeah and then there's a pl is there a plan to put that recorded somewhere oh eventually yeah. yeah i mean i'm again i'm trying to get better at just enjoying the shows and not like putting 
uh, hard uh, deadlines on stuff. But yeah, I mean, I would imagine at some point I'll do some sort of self-produced special or um, uh, I don't know, album again or something. But it'll be recorded at some point. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. How are the Vikings going to do this year? Oh man, uh, I'll say ten wins and be. Su I'll be pleasantly surprised if it's more. I I, I don't think they're going to be terrible. I think the defense the defense can't be any worse. They added Jordan Addison, so I'll say ten wins. What did you think of him getting caught 140 miles per hour on 94? Apparently, his dog was in distress, and I have pets too, so I'm not <laughs> until we hear otherwise. I mean, as far as stuff that the Vikings have done, I mean, it's not like he's. Uh, getting a double head blow job on a boat or something but uh the speeding is definitely um you know not nothing by comparison <laughs> we don't know what that dog emergency yeah, was that's true that's until true. we know yeah yeah uh well thank you robert for doing this uh people she comes to your shows the rest of the week here at acme follow you on instagram at insta instagrampa comedy love it thank Thanks. you